Good morning, y'all. Y'all know I'm here with another topic. In the morning, I'm going to have, I'm going to talk about, you know, life issues. And then in the afternoon, we can talk about the money. So today, I wanted to talk about um, the misperceptions of a housewife. Because I hear people be like, oh, you don't have to worry because you're a housewife. Or they just always be saying like little slick stuff when they find out like that you're not one of those um you're not a woman that works and have to provide for her household like some women let me um let me close this wait i be forgetting to close the office door and they be talking in the other room so i be having to close the office door but yeah so i kind of want to talk good morning kayla you missed your appointment i called you last night and left you a message but i'm going to try to kind of talk about the misperceptions of being a housewife because if you know anything about me i'm a housewife but i am also a business owner okay so i think what happens with a lot of people to be honest is when they hear housewives or whatever they think oh she just a housewife she sit at home she cook she clean you know she don't have to do um she don't have no life or she don't have no say so i can't speak for anybody else and what their situation is is like as a housewife but i can definitely speak <laughs> it's okay you can reschedule I can definitely speak for myself as a housewife, okay? So for me, like, even though I'm a housewife, okay? So housewives are basically women that live with their husband and they don't have to work, right? They don't have to pay no bills or whatever. The husband take care of everything. That's my husband. My husband take care of all of our living expenses, okay? Now, when I met my husband, let's keep this real. I was already made okay my husband ain't make me i was already getting my bag and already doing what I, I wanted to do i was in my career working in corporate america right so when i got with my husband he was the type of man like he was a manly man like he believed in caring for his family and doing a, and you know doing all that stuff and hey i'm cool with that you know hey hey that's a plus i ain't trying to you know knock no man that won't take care of his woman so i wasn't in my relationship with my husband even though i worked and i made my own money when it came to us living together and being on that level he didn't require anything from me at all far as like finances or whatever he didn't require any of that from me so with that being said because he you know he stepped up to the plate and he took on that role i didn't have to really stress so basically he came in he leave he eliminated some stress that I had already, you know, as being a black woman in the workforce and, you know, just being a black accountant, it was hard. So a lot of people think, oh, you're a housewife. You can't do this. You don't got no access to money. You ain't got that. That is, I don't know. Like I said, I'm going to just speak about me. I don't know how true that is for nobody else. But when I met my husband and we began to take it to the next level, I had access to everything, bank accounts, social security, credit cards, all that. It wasn't nothing limited. You know, all he always asked was to make sure that I paid all the bills on time, like we were in, in the dark or rent one paid or whatever it was. Like, I was not in a situation where I couldn't be myself. So with me as a housewife, what I did was I began to capitalize on that time, that extra time. Because what happened with my husband is when I decided that I was just tired of the corporate America world and I wanted to leave, like my husband was like what you, you don't have to be there if you don't want to be there go so i did but i didn't want to just sit home so what i did with my time and my opportunity to be free from the workforce because i did not have to work if i didn't want to i became a business owner so that's why y'all hear me say i'm a housewife but i'm a boss mom too because not only do i have the option to stay home and do nothing if i choose not to I mean, of course, I'm going to cook and clean and all that stuff, but that's what you're supposed to do anyway. But I decided that I'm going to capitalize on this time. So I started my business doing my own thing, doing me. But the burden of us living, being able to live comfortably was never put on me. 
okay so i don't know why people feel that like housewives are lazy they don't do nothing they just sit at home all day and watch soap operas and whatever it is that be going through people's head but i'm here to tell you that that, that is not the truth that is absolutely not the truth so if you ever if you're a woman that wish to be able to have choices okay i believe for me personally i believe that i was put in a, a situation where my husband allowed me uh well i'm not gonna say allow but he created a world that gave me choices because he decided you know that if i wasn't happy he was gonna do whatever it was to make sure that i was happy and if not being on somebody's job was gonna make me happy that's what it was gonna be so don't ever look at a housewife and look down on her because you don't know what that woman doing behind the scenes. Sometimes our job is harder than y'all job out there. So like people be like, oh, she a housewife or she a gold digger. How the hell being a housewife is a gold digger? How the hell is having a man that decides that he wants to be the provider for his family and make sure that they don't want for anything and i'm talking about basic needs is being a gold digger like people be killing me when i say people be killing me with all these um assumptions like assuming what somebody got going on in their life just because you think you know what's going on in life so i'm here to tell you this Stop assuming that housewives don't do nothing. I get up and I go to work every day. Yeah, my money don't don't necessarily require me to make sure that I'm gonna take care of bill, but I got I got money, you know. Even though I'm a housewife, I still I took my opportunity to start a business. Some housewives they decide they want to spend their time just raising their kids. Let them do that. That's what they want to do. But every housewife is not sitting there ain't doing nothing so people be like oh you ain't no housewife because you go get a bag the the lie because let me tell you something i ain't got the work if i don't want to but i go get my bag because i like to go get my bag okay but i can get i can guarantee you this that if it don't work if my company don't work my family ain't gonna suffer why because doc got that handle he's the provider he's the head of our house so yeah, I'm a housewife and a business owner. I became a boss mom. Why not become a housewife and capitalize on it? So guess what? When I'm making these money over here, if something did happen with my husband and his career, guess what? I got him. Because I've been stacking. Because he ain't been depending on my coins. Because he created a comfortable life that we can live on, that he can afford. Not that where he got to say, oh, well, I need you to make sure you have your part of the mortgage or you need to have your part of the insurance. He didn't do that. And I, I don't care what nobody say. I ain't, I'm not, I'm, I'm not trying to be, with, listen, ain't no man can ever take my husband's place because I, I can't take less than what he given. That man came in my life and respected everything that I had going on, even though, like I said, I had my own money. Own money, own car, own house. It was me, my dog, in, in the party life when I met my husband okay I wasn't looking to be saved or made because I was already made I already had my stuff together okay but when I met my husband he made life easier that's what my when I used to grow up my grandma used to always say a man is supposed to come in your life and make it easier and you supposed to also make it easier for him and be his helpmate you know and I never in my life had to tell my husband to be a provider never that's how he came that's how he rolled like he was just that dude that's what he did like he didn't ask me for nothing like even when i used to try to give it he's like i'm good you know he was like women don't take care of me and hey that's probably because my husband not american too my husband is from the virgin islands but my husband never never i've never been in a situation where my husband was like i need your part of the rent or i need your part of the mortgage my husband put my name on that bank account and told me to pay the bills okay so what i did in return with all that free time that i was able to get when i got tired of my let me tell you the best thing to know is that when you are a woman and you begin to have kids 
or things begin to happen in your life and you got a man on your side, the best thing, the best feeling is to know that he got your back 100% and he going to be there for you like he's supposed to be there for you. So let me tell you something. Yes, it is early. So let me tell you something. What happened to me when I was in corporate America as a black accountant? They were really, I mean, I was stressed out. Like them people was so, it was so much uh, discrimination in that place. It was terrible. And my husband, they used to always see my husband. Like this was before we had gotten married. Um, he used to come every day, every day, have lunch with me or whatever. And I used to be telling him about what they used to be doing to me. And it used to be hard because I was the only like little blackie in there with all these other people and i had gotten tired and did, like i said this was before i met, married my husband um and we were living together but you know he was taking care of everything and i had told him i was like you know i'm just tired i can't do this anymore i just rather just do my own thing i'll figure it out i don't know but i and my husband just simply said uh quit and i was like what he was like you don't have to be there he was like why are you letting people stress you out that and you don't have to be there you have nothing to worry about. And I was like, you know what? You're right. But we sometimes as women, we beat ourselves up when God puts somebody in your life to help you move to the next level and be great. You don't have to be out there getting it out the mud if God going to send you somebody there that's going to love you and protect you and provide for you. And there is nothing wrong with a man providing for his family. Like, period. And I go get a bag. When I tell y'all, I go get a bag. But my husband provides. So like y'all gotta stop trying to make it seem like housewives ain't worth nothing. Don't do nothing. Cause baby, it's a lot of housewives out here getting bags and living their best life. The only thing is that they is not responsible for where they lay their head at. Cause they got a whole husband that's providing. And ain't nothing wrong with that. I ain't gonna ever be uh I ain't gonna ever apologize for having a husband that take care of his household. I ain't gonna never apologize for that. Nope, not going to do it. Ain't going to do it. Make money, not friends. Because that's silly. I ain't going to ever tell my friends to get into no 50-50 relationships with no dudes. I don't give a darn if she making six figures. He better figure out how to make it work for her. If he want to be with her. Because guess what? This is my motto. If you as a man expect your woman to move into a home with you and you're supposed to be the head of the house but you want 50, 50 or whatever you want from her to help pay these bills in this house. You have opened the door for her to go get that half or whatever, 30% or whatever you want her to get to go get it from somebody else. Because you didn't provide. You halfway provided. You halfway stepping. That, and I say, this, uh, this is me. I ain't telling nobody else about what they're doing in their marriage or their they, they relationship. I'm telling you how I feel and how why I'm in the situation I am because I wasn't putting up with it. Like I said, when I met my husband, I had my own house, own car, and dog minding my business. So if I'm going to leave my house, my dog, and go up under your roof and then have to adjust and accommodate, you need to make sure that uh, I got somewhere to go and you need to take care of it, period. Because I wasn't marrying potential. I was marrying reality. When we met each other, we had our own thing. And when I decided, okay, I didn't want to work anymore. I turned into this housewife doing whatever I wanted to do. I was still out there getting my bag. I wasn't just sitting on the couch, twirling my fingers, spending my husband money. No, I was making things happen, baby, period. I, t I capitalized on the opportunity, okay? And I asked and demanded for what I, and I demanded what I wanted, period. Because I didn't have to take it if I didn't want it. See, and, and believe it or not, there's a lot of women out here that would like to have that type of lifestyle. But they get so caught up in what everybody else got to say or call them. Girl, please, you got to get up every day at 6 o'clock in the morning and, and, and make sure you get some people's job and clock and punch their clock. It, it, you ain't trying to do that every day. You know you would rather do something else with your time. But you can't because you decided to be with the dude that didn't want to give you that lifestyle. Period. I'm trying to be real with y'all. You know, I'm trying to be transparent with y'all because I see so many. Come on, daddy. I see so many people be like, oh, ain't no good dudes out there. You're like, 
is there a copy of that original deed in that portfolio what you got with mama name on it and i don't know you gotta look in it look in the black box it might be where is it under the um in the where that pool table at under that table that brown table but yeah in that room with a pool table at. but I didn't I didn't settle for that, y'all. I'm telling y'all, women, single ladies. Let me tell let me get let me talk to the single ladies. Let me take these boots off. I'm gonna talk to the single ladies. Let me help y'all. Let me tell y'all how y'all get a quality man. See, because a lot of times what happened with us as ladies, we be searching for the wrong dude. We be searching for the dude that we think we want, right? That dude don't be the dude that you need to be with because he don't mean you no good. I don't know daddy i have to look for when i'm finished i don't know it's, in, it's out there somewhere but that ain't the dude that you want to be with you want to be with the dude that's gonna adore you let me tell you it was so many dudes i wanted to be with that that exactly what i meant when i said i did marry potential but just because it worked for me doesn't mean it will work for everyone and i was 18 no and i'm gonna I'm tell you again olivia i told you this already you did not marry potential see because i knew i knew paul before you married paul paul was that man already that was reality he was not rich he wasn't but he was a provider regardless of what he had he was gonna make it happen that was the reality of who that man was that was before he even had met you that's who that man was whether he married you or any other woman that life that you have is what that woman would have had with that man and i know because that's my friend like that's who he was it was no um it was no potential you know yeah he was he was destined to be great he was going to do that when i'm talking about reality i'm talking about that man himself i'm not talking about his paycheck I'm not talking about how much he can afford, uh, what, what type of house he can put you in, what type of car. I'm talking about the mentality that's already there, what he's already doing. He's already there. I know, at, you know, he's going to make sure you got somewhere to lay your head, whether it's his mama house, sister house, cousin house, brother house, you got somewhere to stay. You're going to have somewhere to eat. He's got your back. That's not potential. That's reality. Now, you grew with that man, which is great. Y'all grew together. But he was already that man. He was already that man. That's why I say you didn't marry potential. You married reality. He just progressed from what he was already at. But he was already that man. That man has not changed from since the day I met Cottrell. He's still the same man that I met when we were at FAMU today. He has just progressed. He has grown. But he is still the same man. So that's what I'm talking about. So I'm not, we're not talking about, um, like money and stuff i just want you to understand i'm talking about the clear reality of the man that was in the mirror the man that you decided to say i do to you that was the reality you knew what you were getting into a lot of times we get into these relationships with these dudes that's not even showing you the reality of what he gonna be like period he get missing for two and three and four days okay then he over here with uh his homeboys. Yeah, you can call in. Let me uh put the link in the uh comments. Let me copy. You're gonna need to go. You're gonna need to go get it off of YouTube. Go to my YouTube because um this link is not gonna come on this profile. So go to my YouTube, Olivia, and go to the live video on the YouTube and um copy the link. Grab the link so you can come in. I just posted it. If you want to come in and chat with me, you want to join. But yeah, you don't want to marry potential. Bump that. You want to marry reality. And remarry reality is not saying that he's a millionaire now, you know, because at the end of the day, in reality, my husband was not Dr. Hodge when I married him. But I knew he was going to be Dr. Hodge because I knew what the who, what man I married, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Like, I knew his plan. I knew what he wanted to do. And plus, even though he wasn't Dr. Hodge, he was still capable of being the man that I needed him to be and that time okay i didn't have to depend on nobody else but him he was that man he was that dude that's what he did period i didn't have to think hopefully this works no i knew it's gonna work 
because I knew that's not how it was. Wasn't no if, ends, or buts about it if he was going to do it. It was when we were going to be done with the process. See, his education was just a process. We just had to go through the process. We knew it was going to happen. But before that, he was already doing what he was supposed to do as a man, which made me... Messenger video. Which made me... Uh, Hold on, y'all. No, you got to get, um, you have to, Olivia, you have to go to YouTube and click the link so you can come in through the uh, platform. Go to YouTube, type in um, P Mathis. I should come up with my, my live should come up and go to the comments and hit that link. You want to come into there. Don't call in through Facebook. Okay. But yeah. So like I knew who to do was. So this is what we do. I'm going to tell y'all single ladies. Let me help y'all. This is what we do. Right. First thing that we do is we we start looking at swag. You used to been there, done that, had the dudes with the swag, with the good cars, all that crazy stuff. That you used to be me. Okay? I'm from Miami, y'all already know. That's what I was attracted to. Look, go on, go to YouTube. Go to YouTube and type in P Mathis and Associates. Gotta go to YouTube. You gotta get off of Facebook. Olivia and go to YouTube and search my name. I'm gonna do it with you. I'm gonna do it with you so you can find me. I'm gonna tell you what I'm doing. If you just go ahead and search P, if you just put P Mathis in there one word, I'm gonna it's gonna be the third video. It's gonna show you live. Click on that live video. When you click on that live video, I'm gonna walk you through these steps. There's going to be a link in the comments. That's what you want to do. So, this is the live. And then the link is down there. So, you just that's what you want to do if you want to join um, on the video. But, yeah, so we do that. So, I was, you know, I was into the dudes with the cars. Nice swag. And I'm like, wait a minute. Now, don't get it wrong. Now, I kept the swag because my husband got the swag. Now, you got to have the swag. Some stuff you just can't compromise on. Like, if you can't dress, I don't know. I don't know how to do that. Right? So all that I was in, I really wanted to like be with those type of dudes just because that's what I grew up around, right? So relationship after relationship after relationship did not work because I was trying to find a dude that I thought I needed. I done been cheated on, I done been engaged to a dude that was married, okay? I done been cheated on. All of that. Been there, done that. Like I tell all my exes, blame it on me. Say it's my fault. I don't care. Okay? All of that. All, all that time I was searching for the dude that I wanted. Right? The whole time. After my last relationship, I was so heartbroken. I'm not going to lie. If I could be honest with y'all. I was so heartbroken from this dude. Like, because I really wanted to be with this dude. And we were young and dumb and doing stupid stuff and we just couldn't get it right he was doing stuff so i'm gonna tell you by the time i had gotten to him i had been done wrong so much so when he started doing me wrong baby i turned it up i started doing wrong too he would cheat i would cheat he would cheat i would cheat and then it just started to get like our emotional roller coaster we just didn't need to be together we, we're gonna be together or we ain't like to the point the dude was having sex with one of my friends like so been there, done it with all the dudes that I thought I wanted to be with, that I thought should be for me. You know, I take the blame for it. The relationship ain't work. Blame it on me. Lo and behold, after that relationship, about three years later, because I, I had to take a break. I was just chilling, doing my own thing. You know, I was casually dating. I wasn't in no committed relationship with nobody. Wasn't doing it. Ain't going to do it. Go find your mama. Play with your mama about it. So I was casually dating. Then... I had sat down one day and I was like, you know, oh, I ain't tell y'all about this. Y'all know I'm I'm always on it. Messing with a married man. Let me tell y'all how this, this even happened. I got sucked into a married, a relationship with a married man. Let me tell y'all. That's why I say Negroes be lying. I did not know this man was married. I didn't know he's married. Let me tell y'all. This was, it was so bad. I'm gonna let you in in just a minute, Olivia. It was so bad, I didn't know. I'm going to let her in. Let me let her in. Just a minute. But it was so bad, I didn't know he was married. Let me tell you how I found out this man was married. 
This man, we I he had done bought me a house. I was still in college. Everything. Paying for everything. We going everywhere. We on trips. All this, right? We chilling. You know, I'm good. The wife show up to my house. She know about me. I don't know who she be. To the point where we ended up in uh we ended up in a um conversation together when i tell i this is i can't make this up it was me the dude and his wife in his living room trying to figure out what was really going on because dumb dumb didn't know this man had a whole wife but i'm different yes him that house no 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 the house that he bought me was not her house that house was mine baby okay i ain't never been no fool okay negative okay negative that was not her house that was precious house okay so when i found out all of this you know he was trying to convince me oh i ain't want to tell you because i was gonna leave her or whatever and i'm a different type of chick i find out you married this was the second time this happened to me i find out you married i'm out i don't care how much i love you and i did i love him i think he was a great guy gave me everything that i wanted i couldn't complain but i couldn't get over the fact that this dude was married so i told him like we got to we got to dissolve this stuff i'm finna sell this house all that stuff right so in the midst of that we going back and forth the lady going back and forth she knocking on my door this i thought i let him go she knocking on my door looking for her husband he ain't here because i ain't playing them games with y'all he ain't here because i don't so he got to go i don't care i changed my locks don't play with me i i fit this mortgage until i can get rid of this okay got got ready to get rid of the stuff you know so we can dissolve i'm fair i'm gonna give you your, some of your money back because i don't want no karma coming back on me so we getting ready to go close the deal here comes she come she come want to come go with us i had to take the lady all the way to the sheriff department like she was following me she was really uh, stalking me so lo and behold i got rid of that relationship thank god it was a hot mess okay so i said okay lord i'm trying not to be gay i'm just being honest i ain't want to go mess with no girls but i was like at this point like what well, dang maybe it's just maybe i just need to be with a girl because men ain't working for me every time i turn around negroes just that's all they want to do is cheat they be lying that's all they do so right so like i told you it was me and my dog so after that relationship i got another house um it was me my dog and just us so i prayed a prayer this is right before um right after i graduated from college i had got rid of that relationship after college after i graduated because i wanted better for my life so i prayed a prayer and i said to, to the lord i said listen god i don't want to give up on love I don't want to go the other way. I just want a man that's going to love me for, for me. And I begin to lay down the parameters of the type of guy that I desire and ask God if this was right for me to please send that guy to me. I wasn't going to look no more. I wasn't going to look no more. All right. So I did that. I prayed that prayer. And then like in like, I think it was like less than 30 days or probably like exactly in 30 days, my husband found me on Black People Meet. He did. And then the rest is history okay so don't think that you can't get a great man sometimes you got to sit your butt down and allow that man to find you because when he finds you nine times out of ten he gonna adore you because that's what he want and he gonna do anything in this world to make sure you and his family is straight period and will go the best about you but i'm gonna let my sister y'all come on this is olivia this is my sister-in-law y'all know she always be coming on video but this is, good morning. Yes, this is olivia davis she's married to one of my bestest friends Catrell davis they've been married for oh is it 13 years 13 this man say yes 13 years a very, very long time and they were young in love honey Whew, i couldn't do it <laughs> listen hands off to them because i wasn't ready because i was a hot mess i can do a little what olivia did but i want to let olivia tell her story and she keeps telling me that she married potential but i ain't gonna let her say that Listen, i mean she married reality what is well potential can become reality if you you breaking up i think your signal may be uh bad is that better that's better i can hear you now okay because i'm on the wi-fi but spectrum be playing with me i live out in the country oh yeah 
Um, you might so, need to plug it in. <laughs> on the phone. Yeah. On, I'm on the phone, not even a laptop, because you know how to hardwired it. Anywho, yes. potential, the definition of potential is it's not there yet. Let me get, let me get uh, the, the, I'm going to give you a dictionary put, uh, it's, definition. It's of not there yet physically, but it's being manifested. You can see it. it it's, it's, it's pretty much faith. The definition. Having or showing the capability to become or develop into something in the future. Okay. So when Possible, I. Say, likely perspective. Thank you. When I say I did marry potential, as you stated when you started your. um. Well, when I signed in, because I think you were about 18 minutes in, you already had your career path lined up. You was already doing for yourself. Right. Doc already had his career path lined up. He was already doing for himself. Now, y'all were building for yourselves individually and then met each other and decided to do so. The potential. Yes, you had potential to be greater, but you were always there already. He had what he had. You had what you had. Right. I remember when I was 18, I ain't have 17. I ain't have nothing. I was still living at home with my mama and daddy. He married potential just as much as I married potential. When I met my husband, he was still, what? He had just moved back home, helping his mom out, trying to get his life situated. He was 20. You know, and you, I, I didn't used to mess around like that, but y'all, y'all do things differently. I had West Indian parents. My mom's speech at my wedding was, I don't know, I didn't realize we let her spend that much time with you, but here we are. Congratulations. Yes, she did. Yes, yeah, she did. <laughs> You're breaking up again. We're going to get let you get come back in with your uh, Spectrum Wi-Fi. There it is. Okay. I'm there, you there you go. But yeah, her, that was her whole thing. So when I say potential, I don't mean like blue. That's my baby, y'all. She in the background tearing stuff. So you're talking about the, the 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 lifestyle, the financial aspect. I'm I'm talking about being wise enough to see that somebody is willing to stand on what they're talking to you about. At no point in time did I ever doubt that my husband is capable or was capable of doing where what we are right now. And I don't believe he doubted that I was capable of managing things the way that I manage them right now. But the reality is we were not living that way when we met. So when I say married potential, potential is- Living which way? Let's, let's, let's break that down, living what way? Oh, I, I'm, I'm a stay at home mom. Mm -hmm. I've worked in the past. I've never maintained a full-time job since having children because that was just what we decided was best for the makeup and the build of our household. So we consolidated and decided whatever he made is what we were gonna live and save and move off of. And that was a decision that was made on both of our halves. Now there have been times where I was sick of being a stay at home mom. He wasn't sick of being a stay at home mom. Right, so stop right there. <laughs> Remember I told you, you marry reality? Yeah. Remember I told you I knew Paul before you knew Paul? Mm -hmm. That was Paul's dream, to always take care of his family. So regardless, so, Hey, but that's why I wanted you to understand you marry reality. That's who that man was. Any woman that Cottrell got with was going to live that lifestyle. If you speaking if you you know, agree. I reality. I get right. So then when I, you I get the potential it for reality, it's what he always wanted, but it wasn't what I got when we married. It was something you, together. What, but when you when you married him, Olivia, before mm -hmm. you married him, he was taking care of you. You, you didn't even have to work. I was still in high school, but after we got married, I did start having, I did, I did end up having to work because he wasn't able to get a job where we were. It took him about, yeah, we had both sets of parents to help. We've had an, let's say this, potential doesn't come to be all by itself. Okay. You have to have the support system. You have to have the people around you. You, and that's not like, oh, those people are just going to show up. Like we had our parents at no point in time when we were coming together, anything like that. Once that man asked me to marry him and made me his, our parents were in it, both sides. Like they were on it. whatever they had to do to help us. They were there, what whatever they needed to do, whatever, even financially, both sets of parents, they were there for us. So it's not like we did it all by ourselves, but also exactly. people like to be assigned to, to potential. They saw the ability for success in us. So they 
did that. Were we successful at the time? No. Hell no. The dog is eating the carpet, which is where I say potential and reality. You can yeah, say no. the reality of the situation is, I love my baby. She's so I'm, the, I'm bringing my belt. Tell her she don't know Auntie B, but ask baby. It's okay. She she see the belt and run, girl. She know what time it is. Blue. But, but, but no, like I get what you're saying. You know, I do get what you're saying, but I just want to know you she was all that man because that's who he wanted to be. Right. That you is the one of things that reality. The physical reality of what there I you go. Said there you go. Was, I'm gonna have to give him time. I'm gonna have to give him time, and he's gonna have to give me time for us to build it together because we were, as I said, 18. I didn't expect at the age of 20 he was supposed to have all his shit together, so on and so forth. Which we'll is go back to mental, mental, the mental, the mental. So that I'm mental not talking about the other stuff. I'm talking the mentality. Like yeah. if you were 18 year old dating in college, you know. You're looking at his mentality, yes, his actions, because he's going to be great. But you gotta pay attention to what he's doing, what's coming yeah. out of his mouth, even at 18, because yeah, you gotta get back on the same page. Because a lot of girls will, they'll oh, have, I'm gonna be with you know, he majoring in, he majoring in engineering, or or he in pharmacy school. But you know what? Some okay. guys will tell a lie. Some guys will sell you on a dream, like the married man situation. You I have see. to be wise enough. You have to be wise okay. enough to not only see potential but recognize the lies if there are lies there. And, and I tell you, I ain't gonna lie. Hold up under pressure. I ain't gonna lie. Them two married men that I got with, they were good. Cause they were always with me. You can tell me. I'm talking about. You can't be good and say they. You can't be good at somebody else. No, I'm saying good at what they did. Oh, oh yeah. talking about. We slept in the same bed at night. You wasn't, I wasn't alone. I was in a full blown relationship. You know my parents. You know my people. This wasn't no secret. Hell, if you ask me, the wife was the secret because she had to come find me. I didn't know who the hell she was. But that was not right. Look, uh, say to say, hey, that wasn't right, is which is why I got out of it. And I'm not gonna. I'm gonna tell y'all. Sometimes these married men will get you, and it will be hard to leave, especially if you've fallen in love with this person. You started building a life with this person. You think you're gonna be with this person? It's hard to leave. But the best thing that you can do to have a better life is to let it go and let him know that that's not what you want for your life. Because I felt for me that they chose for me. You can't choose. Let If I wanted to mess with a married man, let me choose that. But you chose that for me. And like I said, when I found out, I was already almost two years in when that lady come knocking on my door. And I'm looking at her like she crazy. Because I know she lying. <laughs> Mine, she gave me the tea. I can't get mad at that. Mind you, never, he never had on a wedding ring. When I met him, he didn't have on no wedding ring. I don't know what he do to this day, but never did Took me everywhere, picked me up from school, was at the house when I got there. I'm talking about we had a whole life. So I don't know what she was doing. Well, she was able to do that, but I guess maybe she got tired and was like, okay, let me figure out where this dude be at. I'm talking about I knew he had kids because I used to watch the little boy and do his hair. Like this boy never told me, oh, my my daddy lived with my mama. Do and you like, do you ever worry? that that could come back to haunt you or did you because clearly you ain't worried about it now you're married you're no, still on because when i when i when it happened i went to god and i i and i apologize to that lady yeah that was not right. my choice you know and regardless if she decided that she wanted to accept my apology or not i was still sorry even though it wasn't from my own doing i was in it and i wouldn't want nobody to do that to me because i always tell people if you know my husband cheating come tell me period Yep, I want to know. But you got to come with your receipts. I need video. You know, I need video. I don't want no pictures because people Photoshop. I need video and all of that. Okay? But yeah, I did feel, I felt so bad. Like, I was so depressed. I was, I went to the church. I gave the church they name, the, the man name and everything. Like, Jesus just, just let him go. And I called his wife. And I told her, you know, I apologize or whatever because I was in it like I was in it and I was messed up too. And you hurt people, hurt people. And I had to learn that like, yes, I'm hurt. But at the end of the day, he did what he did to me. But that's not her fault. 
Okay, just like it wasn't my fault that he cheated on that he was cheating on her. That's something he got to deal with, and okay. he got to go to the to God and uh, repent for it because I laid it on the altar and walked away and got and, and got my own man. That's interesting though, because as a wife, your wife, I'm a wife now. I'm sure there are other wives listening. We tend to have that 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 mindset that if something is going on before anybody else has to tell me, just knowing my man, and this is the wives that are actually wives, just knowing my man, before anybody brings you anything, I feel like I would know something. I like, already know. I'm like, you know, so even to say like, oh, bring me the proof, it, it's, it's for me, it's almost like you could bring it, but if I knew, I knew. So what's what's the issue there? I, but I think I would know. The wife. Now, as, as being the other woman, it's almost like a woman's intuition is a woman's intuition. How do you not know something right? But you've been in the situation where you said you, you were just you just hurt, don't. not when, once. When I tell you, you just some of these men are good. You would have you can ask my friends. You would have never known that man had a wife. You can tell us that he had a wife. That was my boyfriend. Like for real. <laughs> when I broke up with him, the dude. This was the first dude. This was my, the first guy that I met. He, we were engaged by this time. The lady called me. I was getting ready to move to Michigan with this guy. Get, the lady, your, get out the screen, baby. The lady called me. I'm thinking the lady was supposed to be the housekeeper that I was hiring because I was interviewing housekeepers for my house. You know, I didn't do all that. So when she called me, I was like, oh, are you the housekeeper from such and such? She was like, housekeeper. I ain't going to say his name. But she was like, I'm his wife. I said, Rip. I said, uh, but I'm his fiance. He said, uh, yeah, I know. Well, bitch, how you know about me? Where you come from? Now, I did know she was the baby mama. I didn't know she was the wife. Still, the wife. That's another thing, too. When you dating a man who has children from a previous relationship, I get it. It's awkward. It's different. Even if they're, I'm, I'm not going to pick up no man that yeah, can't introduce me to the mother of his children. I'm not saying me and her have to be friends. We no, don't no, know. Had, no, no, no. She had had custody of his kids. She had left. This woman had left. I was watching them damn kids. Like, I can't say his son's name, but that was my baby. She was not in the picture. I guess, I don't know what the, and maybe. So at that know. point in time, you really didn't have nothing to Right. He maybe he was telling the truth where they were they were supposed to be getting the divorce. She left or whatever. But I guess for me, I didn't want to hear that because you were still legally married. So his situation was a little different because, like I say, I was with the kid. I used to watch his kid all the time, you know, and all that stuff like that was like my baby. But you could have told me that you were still married to this girl. And I believe this is how she found out that I was engaged to that man. His sister ended up being in my class. And, you know, she ain't really like me like that. And then um, that's when, like, the stuff started hitting the fan. And I think that's how she got my phone number. Mm. So I don't know what the whole situation was. I know she was gone. She didn't have the kids. Like, she just left them or whatever. And I guess she figured, hey, I'm going to let her know I'm still married to him. Cool. Have your husband. Because I'm going to get my own. Mm -hmm. And he can have the ring. Oh, and I pawned all them engagement rings, y'all. You talk, you talk about a woman had a collection. More, more than rings than fingers. Three engagement <laughs> rings, baby. Pawned them all. I remember when I pawned the first one, dude was mad, mad. I can't it's believe it. What I'm supposed to do, give it back? Listen, he sent his, his brother to my house. Talk about some, why would you do that? I spent all that money. I say, and guess what? It's mine now. They ain't get. I know they didn't give you the amount that it's worth. I, I, I told him. I say hey, that's fine. It was probably fake anyway. Oh, you know I was petty. I was petty. But no, like for real. Like uh, and that's like back to the topic. We gotta stop having the perception that housewives don't do nothing. Some housewives they stay home. They take care of their kids. They teach their kids. Some. <laughs> Why some stay at home wives are like me. They 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 stay at home, but they run their own businesses. Some wives, they be there, they don't do nothing. Okay? They're not not a damn thing. They don't want to cook, they won't clean, they won't do nothing. So you can't just 
just put housewives in the box and assume that all of us are doing the same thing because we're not we're absolutely not and like i tell people yeah i got a job but i'm not responsible for my household my husband is like so if my business don't work it's not like my family gonna fall because we don't depend on the money i make but if it did I, you know I, at least i can kind of help him out if i you know if he needed me but all housewives are not freaking lazy like i can't stand for people to think that oh you're a housewife oh you lazy or oh you're a housewife you're a gold digger oh, here's the I'm not a gold digger because my husband decided to take care of me the first thing we need to do is stop giving a damn how other people perceive what we're doing. Because if you have the kind of man, if you are with the kind of man, if you are dating the kind of man, or the, if you are the kind of woman that believes, That's that believes that no matter what, at what age you're housewiving, because I've had people tell me, but your kids are in school now. Why don't right. you have a job? Listen, if you're the type of person that believes that way, you're not the type of person that needs a housewife, nor are you the type of man that needs to Mm -hmm. like, why? Maintain like, that needs to uh, maintain a woman. You do. You it. need somebody that is equally yoked with you that is gonna go out and slave the way you work. She work. What you pay for, she pay for it. Be with that person. But right. are the person that wants to be a housewife. What we ought to be talking to is what are the signs? What are the tools? What are the steps to that? successfully and if you're the type of person that wants to be a housewife thinking like oh i just don't want to work it's the easiest way out boo boo you're gonna want a job real fast you're gonna no you're gonna want a job real fast because yes let me tell you something y'all we, we have responsibilities this lifestyle ain't for everybody because please believe it that man still got to be taken care of he can't be out working all day and you don't feed him you don't wash his clothes like that's selfish so there are some things that you are obligated to do do even though you have the freedom to live your best life, you still got to take care of this man just like he take care of you. So my thing is, being in a situation like this, it's about the team, the, uh, the teamwork. Like me and my husband are a team. You know, that's he's a man, man. That's what he like to do. He don't depend on women to take care of him. Some men not like that. So if you are a woman that desire to be with a man that's going to be a sole provider for his family without looking in your face, talking about where yours at, you got to start asking the right questions. Actions is going to show. And let me tell you something. A lot of times you ain't even got to ask the questions. He's going to let you know what it's about and what he what he's going to do for you and how he is planning to provide for you. He's going to put that out there to you. He's going to be vocal about it because that's the type of man he is. That makes him happy to be able to say, I take care of my family. OK, some men are intimidated by having to say, I take care of my family. They feel like they're used. They feel like you abusing them if they have to take care, if they got to pay the rent, the lights, the internet, and the cable bill. And you don't want to be with nobody that feel like you're taking advantage of them either. Right. You don't want to be with you want to be with somebody that really want to do that. Like that's their lifestyle. That's the okay, that's what is the word. That is their value system. Find out what your man value system is. OK, because if his value system is not to be a provider for his family, you're probably never going to have the opportunity to say, you know what, baby, I'm tired of this job. I'm walking off. I have had people go to their husbands, friends and tell their husbands how tired they are and they just want to leave their job. And he tell them, well, until you replace that income, you're going to have to stay there. I, I Listen, I didn't have that experience. My as the women of the household, even when you are working, you still doing the stay at home mom stuff because even when you you were holding down a nine to five, you're still nine times out of ten. If there's a problem at school, you don't want to start off of work. That you're the one that they're gonna call. You nine times out of baby for them. Doctor's appointment to be made or to be taken to, prescriptions to be picked up and dropped off, you soccer games, football games, so on and so forth. And you know what? Being a stay-at-home mom does not remove the responsibility of my husband to be a father to his kids. It does not mean he does nothing for his children. Exactly. Just like if I was a working mom, I shouldn't have to do everything for my children. But somewhere in the middle, you find your compromise. So if you can be so dog exhausted, so tired, so this, so that, from doing both jobs, that means you understand that one job is enough. So to ever turn your nose up at a woman who chose not to suffer and struggle and do one job, who chose, yeah, one job. who chose to be with a man who did not need her or want her to suffer and struggle, it brings my husband joy.
elation to see me doing foolishness like pole dancing, gardening, yeah. you want to do building things, tearing it up. It, it makes him happy to see me doing those things. And at no point in time mean. has he looked at me and been like, "I'm so upset that." You know, you're here taking care of the household and cooking dinners and all this stuff, but you have the time to be gardening and doing it right, and doing all that. No, that's what they they want you to be able to do that. And another thing, so women that think that oh, every housewife is living large, got a rich husband. No, no. Sometimes you got a housewife that has settled to live with her husband off of twenty five thousand a year. Sometimes it'd be thirty. Sometimes it might be less than that. But you I got know, I, I've been that housewife. I've oh, been okay. Well, th there you go. But you, as that wife, gotta have that mindset. It's not about what I can do, it's about what he can make happen for this family. So I'm that woman. I'm I, I'm that woman. If my husband making 20 grand a year, 30 grand a year, 40, 50, 60, or 100 thousand a year, we are living off that income. But you also you also have to be a responsible enough woman to understand that if that's the income that you're living off of, sacrifices are going to have to be made on both sides. Nothing. I would suggest you decide to be a housewife and you just want to pop out babies every other week, knowing good and well that man only made thirty five dollars. I mean, thirty five thousand dollars for the year. You have to be responsible. You have to be deliberate in your choices and in your setup and, yep. and in your understanding. It don't mean you you don't deserve to have children or you don't deserve. It's, to have a, process. Kids. it's a process, and it's going to take you a little longer to get to those things than it would take other people. When Paul first joined the military, I I, I told half a lie a little bit because his build up salary, you know, from E two to E three, his taxable salary was one thing, but then the military also offers a supplementary living fund because of the fact that they know they don't pay them people enough. So they gotta make sure that they people taken care of because it how what it looked like your military on welfare. That's not a good look, America. Right. Oh, they <laughs> but you know, for the most part, I mean things things were tight. I didn't always own a home. This was our first home we ever purchased. Quite often we rented, we lived in base housing. You know, you you budget, you make allotments. We don't eat out a lot, even to this day. Um, the times that we did eat out a lot was because I was also working. So it wasn't expected that I was gonna go to work, come home and do a whole meal and set up a whole situation. No, you're working, I'm working, and I was only working part-time, but since we both working and the hours ain't matching up the way they need to for a hot, fresh meal, now we eat now, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Because you just, I physically, I cannot do it. I right. commend you if you can, don't tell me you're not suffering because you ain't doing it happy. I've tried. I ain't doing it. Um, but I can't do it. <laughs> Pick a job. Listen, I'm that woman. I'm going to pick a job. I'm going to pick the side. Which job you want me to do? You want me to do this one or you want me to do that one? Now, if you want me to do that one, please understand that this one is going to lack because she tired. And I, I, I watched my mom do it. So it's not like I have, I don't know women can do it, but I watched my mother do it. My father worked. 80 hour weeks when I was growing up. My father was a welder. He made very good money. My father never had to carry insurance because my mom was a nurse. She worked for the state. I was not rich growing up. We weren't even wealthy, but for five kids in a two income household, we did well. Our parents were good. We were good. Never was out without water, food, right. power, clothes. We were taken care of. But at the same time, my dad would come home and hand my mom his entire check and say, give me this back and handle everything else. And when he said, give me this back, my father didn't even maintain a bank account because that was my mama's job on top of her nine to five, on top of three, my four, job. Oh, five okay. kids. That's a lot. And I mean, my that's dad- a, That's a good thing. That's a lot. They say men don't do that no more. Let me tell y'all something. My husband brings his check home. I know how much we get paid every two weeks. I be know we get we get direct deposit, but we get direct deposit. I be like, what well, we got paid today, and I we got several accounts. We got a bill account, we got his play money account, and we got a savings account. So when he get paid, for the majority of the budget. money for the bills, and he can keep his play money. I don't touch it. I can see it. I'm on all his accounts. I can see everything, but I don't mess with his play money because he deserved it. He worked damn hard. So. Mm -hmm. if he Spend four hundred dollars, five hundred dollars a month on whatever it is that you want to do. That's on him. That's his money. You know, that's his free money. Baby, but to the stock, that check that's come his home. Thing. Listen, that check, that check come home, and we know what's ours. 
and he know what he can go do and play with. You know, I ain't gonna tell y'all how much he get a month because you know people are like, oh, we can't do that. I don't need anybody trying to judge. But he get a, a healthy amount to go play with if he choose to. But my husband frugal, so sometimes I go at his account, he be loaded. So I be like, let me hold some, you know. Let me. <laughs> See, and that works for you guys' household. We do things a little bit differently over here. Um, we do have multiple accounts, but they're more so structured for. Okay, this account is what these bills come out of. This account is for what we can save, when we can save. And then the main account is groceries. Um, if he's playing with something, he plays with it out of there. If I'm playing with something, I play with it out of there. I've okay. noticed. You like you you breaking up again. Okay, am I back? Yeah, you back. Yeah. Um uh, and since purchasing the house, we actually we don't play too much since purchasing the house because we put that, everything we put everything into the house. So God forbid we have to sell, we get everything out of it. Out of the house. Exactly. No, but, but for real, like what works for you in your marriage is what you have to do. I'm just telling y'all about me. We just telling y'all about what worked for us. And like for us, the separate accounts work. Because let me tell y'all, my husband got me spoiled. I ain't gonna lie, I'm spoiled. Oh, she's rotten. <laughs> I used to go and we used to share, like we share all the accounts. We still share all the accounts. But I used to, we used to share the same miscellaneous account where you could just buy whatever you want out of the account. But we used to both have the same amount of money. So like I told y'all, Doc was frugal. So I've been done spend all my money. I just be buying stuff. You know, Amazon got a hold on me. So what I would do is, even though I know my limit was met, I'd be spending Doc money too. So Zot will be like, well, dang, what happened to my money, Precious? You know, my husband, uh, he from the, he from the Caribbean. So he'd be like, Precious, I need you to get the accent together Look, better than he'd that. Be like, he'd be like, Precious, what happened to my money? And I'd be like, oh, that yeah, I had, I, I had bought this because I didn't think you you're doing that. You can't do that. That's not fair. You know, okay. So I was like, okay, I'm, I am i don't want to hear you no more talk about I'd be spending your, you know, your allowance or whatever, and I'd be spending mine too. So I just took my card. This is what I did. And this is why you got to compromise in your relationship. That was minimum. That was that was a minor situation. I don't think he really cared, but I felt like, okay, you can't be doing that. If you say you love your husband, you want to make sure he still, if he do decide about something, he can go in there and spend his $500 that he should have had that you done spent. So I, what I did was I cut up my actual debit card for that bank. And we got another bank and we started putting my allowance in that bank. So when mine was gone, it was just gone. So what I would do, I ain't gonna lie. I told you I'm a score. When I needed his money, I'd be like, let me hold your card. Cause I want to buy something. He gonna give it to me. So now I just asked him for his card. So now he know that like his money finna be spent. Or he'll say- And you ran through yours too. And it didn't run through mine. Or he'll, or he'll say, uh, like his, um, don't spend all my money. Or just 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 at least leave me this and i'd be like okay cool i got you so that that worked too like you want to make sure that your finances are good if you decide to live that type of that housewife life because you want to make sure like all about like i build more power and it has to be the group over you yeah um, it can't just be like i saw these i want these duck bills right it can't just be me, 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 me. I want these duck bill farmer girl boots so bad, but I said I wanted to buy no shoes in 2021 because I in the previous years I done overdid it. So even though I don't have these boots and I want these boots, me and the willpower done got so good, precious. We done got so good. You Sometimes remember you gotta save for it. Sometimes, you know, now what I've been doing, like if I see something that I like, I put it on my wall and then I'd be like, okay, this is how much. Oh, another thing. Let me tell you, I'm gonna help y'all wise out. When you want stuff, just start saying out loud, your husband's gonna buy it for you. You just then like if you don't get it like get send it an email or send him a text message and be like oh that's cute or another thing you can do is get put it in the amazon card just pop it to the sky valentine's like, come around yes. like, yes. valentine's yes. Day. Yes. or get the catalogs delivered to the house in your name and just put them on the coffee table you gotta learn how to you gotta cause see, see men they don't be knowing sometimes you know we they, talk a lot, so they be like, "Oh, she just talking right now." It takes saying it a few times, yeah. like, "Oh, she you not just know, talking. like okay, this is what she really, really want." So, <laughs> like me, my husband know I love rings. I get a new ring every year. Every year I get a new ring. People are like, "You got it?" I thought your ring looked like that. Yeah, that, that's the other one. That, I love them. 
But now I, I go through phases. So I've had the ring phase where that that was a couple of years of a thing that I have I got to shoot. I, I'm a collector in large. So what happens is I'll touch on like right now it's gardening. Most people when they right. decide to start gardening, they don't know if they're gonna be successful or not. So they just buy, you know, one or two packs of seeds. It don't work that way for me. I need all the shovels. That's the Sagittarius in you. I That's need all the shovels, all the rakes. I need, the, I need my suit. I need my suit, my gloves. Every, I, the jumpsuit, I got all of it. I, I, I don't need just, you know, flower seeds. I need all the flowers that I could grow in my zone, all the bulbs, all yes. the tubers, all the roots. I need all the seeds. I um, need the raised garden beds and the solar lights to light my sh I, I go to the Y'all, y'all can live this best life. Listen, ladies, so many women are leaving the workforce. Did y'all see that um that news clip? Oh, yeah. They tied. It's going to happen, though, because the new push is for mental health. And as you become aware of your mental health and your stresses and the things that set you up for failure physically within yourself, I mean, you can die with all the money in your account and children done been to every soccer games and so on and so forth. And the fact of the matter is stress still killed you 20 years before you should have been dead. Because you ain't had no time to yourself because you was only people job. Listen, I be damned. If I go to somebody's job and they tell me they can't, uh, I can't get my leave. I, I mean, the first time that too is we can't make it a one-sided situation because they then men will be like, "Oh, well, you're supposed to be home living your best life, and I'm supposed to be out working." No, I create space for you to live your best you're life. Right. If, if, you you live your best life too. I'm going to deal with the kids. Paul has the time at the gym. Sometimes we take turns getting the kids, depending on how early he gets home and what I'm doing in the house. And he's like, well, oh, I just finished working out. I'm not doing anything. I'll go get them. Turn turns doing the naps, things of that nature. But when you take care of your woman, it makes her want to take care of you. Yeah. And like my husband could come home, you know, because he worked, he gets it down on the couch and have his beer. That's his prerogative. Paul has a 45 minute to an hour long decompression. That's what we call it, decompression time. Every day he comes home, he gets undressed, he does his vape, he will have his beer or his, his juice or his protein shake, or he sits on the phone, he does the stocks. Nobody is to bother him. If he don't talk to you, you don't talk to him, you leave him alone. That's the rules. And don't another thing for nothing. <laughs> another thing I want y'all to understand too is don't ever get so comfortable in your marriage that you forget to take care of your husband. That's how people start cheating. Okay. Pay attention. Don't get comfortable. Don't think, don't even let him think that he can get comfortable or uh, 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 go off the uh, radar and lose his mind. You got to explain that though, because people settle down to get comfortable. So you got to explain what you mean by don't get comfortable. Don't get comfortable does not mean don't settle into a lifestyle. It means don't get stuck in a right. lifestyle. And don't get stuck when, in a when you are married, you're going to have, even when if you've been dating someone for a long time, every day is not going to be the day Cinderella went to the ball. It's just not. Some days are going to be, we got to get up, get breakfast, get these kids out the door, so on and so forth. And that's fine. That's what you got in this marriage for was to right. build and was comfort. So don't get confused when people say don't get comfortable. You're just supposed to be out and wild all the time. But no, make pay attention to your husband. Pay attention to your family. Pay, pay attention, attention to your thing. Let me tell you, a lot of women be like, oh, I didn't know he was cheating. No, yes, the signs were there. I think also a lot of women, once they get that kind of comfort, and they especially stay-at-home wives, because I've seen it. When they get that comfortable in a stay-at-home wife situation, it then becomes... He's going to go out and do his own thing. As long as we take care of here, I'm fine. Until one day she wake up and realize she's not okay. And I'm not okay with that. But I I've ain't okay with that. I've seen it happen in relationships where it's kind of just like, we're just here to make the family work. What he want to do in his private time, as long as he's paying for what's going on over here, I'm fine. That's not... I'm I'm not okay. I mean, I, I, I ain't care. It's going to be okay for them. But that's I ain't the kind of relationship we And talk. I'll be honest. I'll be honest. I'll be honest. I think now my husband ain't never cheated on me, never had no issue with no woman. But I honestly feel like if he did cheat, he made that mistake or whatever, I'm gonna give him one pass. Cause I refuse to just walk away like that. Now, wait a minute now. I done I done build a whole lot. But now if he keep on cheating on me, because we all do our thing, you know, we do our dirty. Everybody ain't nobody perfect. But I don't think that I will immediately leave. Like if y'all seen that whole Whitney uh Wendy Williams movie. Like I really fell for her. Like 
oh my god like it crushed my heart like her husband like i didn't and, watch it yet good first watch the first watch the documentary then watch the movie i mean she was very vulnerable i mean she cried so that's much an, here's the thing that's another side to the stay-at-home wife thing though. he got so, so comfortable. See that. I was gonna, it's not even just that because she's always worked. Wendy's always worked. But, but she got comfortable with what he was doing. Another uh, another side of the stay at home wife thing is you will have men that want to have a stay at home wife and want to take care of their wife, but they want that wife that stays at home and does all of these things so they can have that and eat their cake too. You have to be vigilant and, and be aware and not just hide the red flags or look away right. from the red flags. Kind and of don't let nobody be trying to take no control of you because just because you know housewife don't mean nobody who maybe because I'm a Sagittarius and my mouth too slick sometimes. Oh. I'm the wrong one. Well I'm a Sagittarius. We're Sagittarius. I think we while we are we do have a lot of core similarities, how they manifest in our personalities and our into into our reactions to people are very different. I feel like I used to be more like you in a sense where it's like, baby, come around the corner one more time. Right. Wait, come around the corner. <laughs> now I'm more so just like it's 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 no I'm I'm polite about it too. It's not serving me anymore. I'm done. I'm not finna fight with you. I'm not finna, I'm gonna just get missing. And because I'm not, a, I'm not a hard person to love. I'm very lovable. I'm, I do what I can all the time. I'm there, whatever it is. Initially, you might not miss me. Initially, your pride might have a hold on you. And I'm not talking about my husband. We ain't there. We're not been there. We good. But I'm talking right. about friends, family members. Not people, is the key word. Huh? That's, this is the key word. When I mute your ass, just know it got real. <laughs> so, it's pretty much like I, I will just at this point in time I've been in situations where I begged, cried, and pleaded with people that I loved and I would have done anything for to recognize me, and it didn't work out. I got to the point where it was just like, you know what, you might not miss me right now, but I know what I've done for you and I know what I've been for you. I know who, who you are and I know what you've done for me too. And I might miss you, but I didn't throw you away. You threw right. me. Away. And that that goes back and to what I was talking about yesterday. You have to teach people how to treat you. If you continue to let people treat you the way that they feel you want to be treated, you're going to always be disappointed until you put your foot down and say, this is how I expect to be treated. And but even sometimes you be way, so off in it, but sometimes by the time somebody shows ill intention, sometimes you be like in the marriage situation, you be so deep off in it. It take you a second to realize like this is really this is really happening to me. Right. You'd be like, like no, you would never. Put up with it, but it's years later, it was so, so like, wait a second, how did we get here? <laughs> I wasn't paying attention, and that's and ex is exactly what it is. I wasn't, I was not being vigilant. I you felt or fell into fell into a situation where everyone was being just as genuine as I am. Everyone was just as loving as you are, so on and so forth. And it didn't hit me till it hit me that some people don't got the best of intentions for you or yours. Yep. You need to let them go. She was like, you know, she wasn't paying attention because she was so caught up in her career at the time. She was trying to do her, not get her, because I know that's me. I'm very career driven, but I pay attention. You know, you know, I, I've learned that life balance. You know, I know how to cut it off when I'm at work. When my husband gets home, I get off of work in a reasonable time to be with my husband. So I don't give him no time to be like trying to find somebody else to give him that time that I should have been giving him. You know, when your husband Start not showing up and it's three o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning. Sister girl, let me tell you something. That's a problem. What time your man get off of work? My man get off of work at 3 30. Yeah, my man be home by 3 30. Honey, and, and if he, he home, home by 3 35, I'm calling. You all right? You not in no accident or nothing. Um the meeting ran long or what? I'm looking well, we live so far out in the country. We don't even go to the gym no more. We just bought all the stuff and stuck it in the garage. This way, be it. So, like, no man should be coming unless he like a what? What you call them, guys? The um, what's the the job title? I'm so I know I know the thing. The the, 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 the promoter. The promoters like promoter. Oh, he he works for a uh, nightclub uh, or something. Yeah. yeah, like unless he that. But guess what? If I ain't got no kids. I ain't gonna lie. I'm, I'm gonna be one too. <laughs> ah, where we working at tonight? Oh no! You, boo? you know you got the boo because I'm gonna be there. Do the clothes. Then when the lights come on, 
And I'm getting in your car. Let me tell you, I don't even love a section at the club. It'd be so boring in the section because I ain't got no friends to just be me up there. Girl, I love my, uh -uh. Girl, I love my sections. When I get them, it'd be me and all my friends. I've been invited the whole group. But Who I ain't got no friends that live close to me. Girl, Oh, it's me, three of us. We get, oh, to to get into your local, your local uh Facebook group. Who, who, who? A housewife and bored and want to go out. Got a boo. Come on. First of all, it's COVID. I ain't going nowhere. I got a baby but with that. I'm not now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> not. <laughs> I've been locked in this damn house since last year. Listen. Oh, you, you see, I'm over here looking rough. I've committed. I'm not. I'm not gonna do nothing till right my before. My child is coming to my house on Friday to do my hair. She's gonna come do it on Friday because I, I was like. I'm not gonna do nothing till right before Valentine's Day. And my poor baby, he, every day, he be, what is that? you done grew all that hair to do what with it? I said, keep it in a bun. That's why it's growing because I don't do nothing with it. I don't care. I, I don't can have hairstyles and be bald head, or I can have this bun and have a head full of hair. What you want? <laughs> but no, for real, for real. Like, y'all stop uh, judging us with housewives. I don't care. Judge your mama. I thought a non housewife said something. You can't be talking about some stuff that you can't even get into. Folks do it all the time. Yeah. I don't. I don't even. I used to. I used to care, and I used to try to talk to and explain. Yeah, what you, what you, what you, I'm what not you. interested in explaining my lifestyle to someone who doesn't want to live this lifestyle. Yeah. Now, if you see it and you want it, I will explain it to you. So you. Well, can some understand. people do want it now. Some people want to just don't. Yeah. Yeah. You can. I. I will explain it to you so you can make sure it's what you want: the good, the bad, and the ugly, the compromising, the because it's a lot. It's not. It's not just a one and done thing. Like right. it's January or it's February now. Um, I'm starting spring cleaning. When when I say housewife, I don't mean like, you know, you. I love you to death, but you got a lot of help to be a stay at home, and that's okay because you deserve that and you can do it. I'm a different housewife. I, I would prefer to do it myself because I don't want to pay nobody for nothing, even if even when I can, even if I could, however you want to see it or however you want to say it, I don't want to pay nobody to do it. I don't want my help. What a help. Thank you. Get the help. And I was gonna say, that's that's gonna say every housewife is different. There's I'm a housewife. Yeah. It's gonna be clean. And I might not clean it. But <laughs> clean when you get home. Where is the help? <laughs> Call the help. I'm and I'm not. I've been to be like, nah, it's okay. Ain't nobody finna be in this house taking up how much help is about out here in Pensacola. You looking at about fifty something dollars for an hour and a half worth of work, and then what? they take a sweet time. I ain't doing all that. That's fifty dollars. I can go to my defense though. See, Let me I, dust these fans. To my defense though, I decided that I wanted to start a business, so I I I be needing help. Yeah. I, no, sometimes I, I'm starting a business. I'm cooking. I'm catering. If that's what I feel like doing today, sometimes I'm out in the garden. I ain't made not a dime. All I did was spend them. It just depends on my mood. I'm a different kind of housewife. So where I can save, I do save. So when I want to spend, it's there to spend. We ain't got no problems. Ain't no no discussions that need to be had because my husband will sit me down and talk to me about a budget real quick. Listen, I don't spend money. No, I can talk about the budget. Why are you bothering me? <laughs> I do nothing. Oh, I thought, I thought, oh have you, you seen that um, video? You see the video? It's the wife. She pouring herself a shot. She crying. She talking about somebody. I've been with this man twenty years. And he just told me he don't love me. I've been with him twenty years, y'all, and he said he don't love me. Then here go the husband in the background. That's not what I said. She said, "What? Well, well, what did you say then?" He said, "I said we've been eating out too much. We can't keep eating out." She said, "Well, that's the same damn thing." thing. <laughs> I was so tickled by that. No more. I was so tickled by that. Listen, my husband be like, my husband would call me. Let me tell you, Amazon is so. Amazon, Ray, tell all your business. Tell all your business. Send all the emails. All, all the emails. He'd be like, "Precious, you were shopping today." I'd be like, "No." He was like, "Well, yeah." Because Amazon, because Amazon said that you bought this with it. Get out my life. Remember when we used to go shopping and leave everything in the car? Huh? Nighttime. <laughs> put it in the trunk. You gotta put it in the trunk. Cause they ain't gonna go in the trunk unless you tell them to go get the groceries. There ain't no groceries in that a day. Mm -mm. I don't need your help. 
You got to put it in the trunk. I used to, oh, and then let me tell you how else I got slick. <laughs> Y'all better not repeat this. He going to watch it back. He ain't gonna watch it. Don't, don't do Facebook and stuff. So listen, uh, you know how you when you buy your big orders from Amazon, right? And you get the big boxes. So you know, every year we do like a little Christmas thing. We give out the toys to the kids and stuff, right? So I usually put that stuff up under the bed in the big box. You so use the charitable stuff to hide your ill games. Yeah, I put my stuff up under there and put it in there. Or let me tell you what you could do. Y'all see these things right here? It's a certain way you got to open it. Y'all see these? When they come in the mail, open it this way, like this. So when your new stuff come, you can stick the package in there, but it they not going to look in there because it's already open. They just think it's trash. They, you just waiting to pick up your well, You mess around and get your stuff thrown away in this house because Paul don't double check nothing. If it's left out on the counter one too many seconds, he's all garbage. Yeah, I don't put it on the counter. I put it in my area. Oh. You gotta put it in your area now. Yeah, because my husband gonna throw it away. Hey, my, you will put you can put a cup like this Two the, on the counter and go and go sit down outside somewhere for a bit. And you come back, your stuff is poured out, cup washed is in in the thing. Yeah, and yeah, I was the ice was melted, but it was a full cup. What you mean the ice was melted? Whole drink gone. Tell me, mm. you didn't want to drink that because you wasn't gonna do nothing but leave it there anyway. Who, who told you that? But yeah, y'all, this was a great conversation. I'm glad y'all sat here and listened to me talk about y'all. I can't even see who's all on here. How many people watching? They done, go they done gone. There was a lot of people on here. They done gone now. And they probably said we done been here for a whole... Look, they, they, they got to go to work. Them folks got to go to work. It's 10 o'clock. And we just here talk. We done talk my damn dog to sleep. Do you see this? Wake up. She passed she the hell out Snoring. snoring. What are you doing with them baby books? I am getting them ready for donation because my babies are too big. These are not their level no more. So spring cleaning has started. I told you spring them spray. The fan ain't no dust on the fan. Windows got to go next. I'm clearing out the books to make space for the mm -hmm. new. I'm starting mine too, girl. We don't went through Gavin's shoes. And I'm starting with my garage though. You starting your? That's Paul's area. He started that yesterday. Um, I still I need to order the pegs because we got the pegboard to hold mm -hmm. all the so I need to order the pegs to go on the pegboard. She's snoring. I know she didn't yeah, just I want to start with my garage because my husband be he be collecting. I'm gonna start throwing some stuff away. Oh, you better not because if he throw your stuff away, it's gonna be a problem. I just want it at my house. Either you're gonna use it or no. Well, what y'all getting y'all getting rid of a power washer? Y'all got a power washer? Y'all trying to sell? No, he no. How about he trying to go buy a power washer? I'm trying to go buy a power washer too. Me and him on the same page. You know, he likes all these extra gadgets and stuff. We still got the generator in there, so that gotta be you know. You need power. books? I know you already got a library for for um. Mm -hmm. you know, what, what books you got? Books, send them on over here. I have the whole dick and all them books, so books. I can send them to give them to Emil's school. Okay. I got the books, baby. I got yeah. all the books. Give me the books. And I'll, and I'll pick my books that I want. And, and then I get the rest of Bags and bags of the books. Girl, you don't want to I think that's something we both did, though. Like, when we found out we were having babies, that was one of the first things we started. Mm -hmm. was the library. <laughs> Listen, the library was on fleet. Stayed on fleet. Listen, I got, I got to actually. The rotated <laughs> drawer. I got the living room library. It's a, you tell me you bought it. It's a book somewhere in a room. Well, 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 my favorite is to read a book. It's a book near you. Don't read a book. I got all, I got these clothes that I need to give because I don't like to give to the Goodwill anymore. I give to like churches and stuff. Because Goodwill I is trying to. to the Goodwill if I don't have no place else to give. But I don't really love to do it, even though I do thrift. So I shop at places like that for knickknacks or just like little things to DIY with kind of stuff. But I don't like the fact that they upcharge things yeah, it's so expensive. It's for free. It's like you're supposed to be here to help folks out. And I mean, I'm not too much of one of the folks that's in need. But when I was, I wasn't coming here because I could have got the same price or better at the Walmart. I want to spend my two dollars, not ten dollars. You know, hey, remember when Google used to have fill up the bag day? Okay. What it was, a dime bag or whatever, all that. Don't play with me. Mm -hmm. Y'all, one time I do just $20. Who for the $20? I might well go to Walmart. Girl. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, 
I like and Second are, Act as well. That they uh, actually are an all-around shelter. Second Act. Um, they. I don't know that one. I don't know. They're not in. They're not everywhere. But if you have them, they donate to women and children's shelters for abused women and stuff like that. <laughs> I do like them. That whole situation. Um, and they yeah. they're not for profit, so it's not nobody like the CEO of Goodwill is rich off of people free stuff. Second Act don't work like that. They donate all of their stuff back into their shelters, into right. education. That's what I want to do. I'm going to take mine to like the churches and stuff like that because I, it just be killing me like for them to be charging that much. You know, people out here, they think they got $5. They can go and Goodwill get a whole outfit, not no more. No. So I take mine. I got like, if you go in my living room, grab my husband. I know he like, what the hell? I got a whole big area of stuff that's going to be in his truck this weekend. <laughs> See, mine's is in the garage, and then when Paul get fed up, he'll stick it up inside the doggone attic. Now, I got to ask him to go get it back, because I'm afraid to go up there. Uh-uh. <laughs> I put it right there by the front door, and then I let him know that I'm going to need your truck, because all this needs to go in there. I'm the one with the truck, so that's why I'm putting it, but then I got I got my my other stuff that I'm working on. So he can drive me around, so I can drop my stuff off. You know, I always make dates. I be like, can you take me? He be like, pressure, you got a car, but I need you to take me. When can you take me? Because I'm trying to make my date. Mm -hmm. it's Saturday at three o'clock. This is where I want to go. So he be talking about you think you got a chauffeur. Yep, you. I be trying to wait for home. That I use Home Depot trips for like we gotta go to the Home Depot to get this, this, and this. Oh, you want to go to the Waffle House too, babe? The Waffle House right up the street. I love the Waffle House now. Oh, I don't do the Home Depot. The Home Depot and the Lowe's. See, my husband think that's the club. I'm not trying to spend my day in, in there. Home Depot just got me. Talk about this gardening thing is is crazy, girl. Do you know I just bought dirt? You see, dirt, and when I just bought cow shit in dirt. Listen, that crap is addictive. My husband can go. My husband can leave the house at eight a.m. I've been alone all day. You say he going to Lowe's. He gonna go. He'll probably come back at like ten thirty, eleven. Drop off a few bags. Oh, I gotta go back because you know I had to do this order. They coming, do an order. He go back. He spent his whole day in them dang on store. I don't go. Mm -mm. Only it's time I go if he agreed to take me to Sam's and buy me something. Because you know Sam's always got something. You know, always can buy something out of Sam's. No. So well, if he, if he gonna take me to Sam's and buy me something, I'll go. This is a little baby book. They don't need this one no more. It's so hard getting rid of some of these books, like the sentimental stuff. You know, I'm a hoarder, uh, but too. I gotta do it. I, that's what I said because I just want to get rid. I just want to get rid of declutter, like declutter. We got well, we're getting stuff. bigger, which means a lot of their stuff is getting bigger. Or like, even though the book has so much sentimental value to me for one reason or another, I know they not. They don't need the doggone Dick and Jane runs and by. They ain't worrying about that book. Huh? And they ain't worrying about it. And then here's the thing. When I send them to go read a book and they ain't in the mood, then they try to get one of these little baby books. But if the little baby book ain't in there, Olivia, you won't have that problem. So here we are. Spring cleaning the baby books out. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to get rid of my, my baby still wants to use his soft books. You know, little soft ones. Oh, yeah. The plushy, I got rid of those a while back, except for his his christening ones. They're they are in a bin somewhere. Oh I'm, I'm gonna be that hoarding ass mom. My, my sons are gonna be 35 years old. I'm be, you want to be pulling out the box? You, you remember this? You, you want to the, the box, box baby? <laughs> Girl, I got I got papers that my husband, my son just colored one line on it. I got the date on it. On it, everything. I'm that mom. I'm I, listen. I keep my baby stuff. I don't care. Like I just want to see what happened on this day. This well, maybe I just want to see. You know. You know what? What what did we do on this? I'm trying to figure out who got what. Oh, so Derek got this one for Christmas, which is on level for him, and he read this one in about a week before and after school and after chores and so on and so forth. And my my Gavin, Gavin got this one for Christmas and did the same thing. Now they they very close in size, yeah, right? Close in size. And then look the, the words, they're not there's Derek's. His words are big. There we go. They they're bigger. You know, it's a whole chapter book. It's not so many pictures. Gavin's has more pictures and his words are a little bigger, but I'm Gavin is in the second range. And this is a rated third and a third grade going into fourth grade book. 
You know, I'm just bragging on my baby a little bit. That's what you need. That's what you want. But here's my issue, right? Because of code, I mean, I've never been one to go to the public library often. I tried when they were smaller. I lose the books. Now I got to buy the books back. They they can't find the book. It's it's a problem. My issue is they read the book. I don't have a problem with them reading the book two, three times. By the time we get to the fourth time, you're playing with me. Because I, I know you have read that book already. But the hoarder in me won't let me get rid of the book. But so long as the book is there and I say go get a book, that makes well, the book an option. What you can probably do is make library dates. Make it a consistent thing. Make it like a tradition. Ain't going to nobody public library. Did you not just hear me say the COVID? Where, oh, yeah. Where's COVID? But after COVID. After, ain't no after COVID. It's like in the Bible. Ain't no after Christ. It's, I mean, it's just before and during. Ain't no after. COVID is forever. <laughs> Listen, and all these folks walk around here. They wear no mask, girl. They be killing me, girl. Your nephew, your nephew told the lady the other day in the store, put your mask on. Oh. I done told you about the lady at the school put her mask down to sneeze into her hand, girl. I had a whole hissy fit in the dip. I said, ma'am, she took some uh, what happened? I said, we saw you. I would have sprayed her. I know that. She was behind the glass, but she's still handing out the tardy slips with the sneeze hand. I would have sprayed her. Yeah, but was going to get the slip. I popped the shit out of Gavin. Don't touch that. Don't touch that. Oh, I can't. Derek then already had his tardy, he sla uh, tardy slip in his hand. Derek, and you know Derek is not the one, two, or three. Derek looked at the slip. He dropped it. I said, you know. Remember my doctor calling me. He probably called me for my birth control. That's your doctor. Oh, girl, I went right back on the depot. I'm not playing with Paul. Girl, I, um, oh, they talking about the flu shot. That's what they text about. No, I, because I had to call them because. You get that flu shot, girl? No, I'm getting a flu shot. Oh. They, they, to, they always be sitting and trying to make you, you know, tell you about it. But I, um, you know how when you, I'm on the pill, so you know how when you get to your last line, yeah. you refill your thing. Mm -hmm. I, I usually get a text message from the pharmacy, be like, uh, you know, uh, time to re pre uh, refill your prescription. Would you like to re refill it? And they said you, you know, you put a yes in the text message. Mm -hmm. Baby, I got my text. So I told my doctor, uh, you need to call Walgreens and find out what's up with my test because I need my pills come next week. Because what I won't be is pregnant. In the name of Jesus. In, in the name of Jesus. Okay. We don't even know if it's going to really turn around. We don't want to have no babies yet. <laughs> yet. We ain't having no more. You done done? Done done. Listen, this year I'm going to be 35 years old. Mariah did Mariah did it. I I am going to somebody's table. The mm -hmm. I mean, you got your baby. You did did what you wanted to do. You got your just the one baby. I'm sure, and they don't feel no type of way about being, you know, the king of the castle over the there. King of the castle. I can't do it no more. Talk mm -hmm. about being on bed rest for nine, ten months. That ain't for me. That, ain't hard. that was difficult for you. That's too much. And they talk about I got to do that every time I get pregnant. Who? Don't worry about it. She won't get pregnant. No. 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 Say less. To, stay, to be up in the house in misery? Mm -mm, that's depressing. Mm -mm. I had perfectly normal pregnancies both times around and I was miserable. So I understand. Girl, you can't walk. They don't want you to do nothing. And you know, my husband is the baby police, honey. And the doctor say no. That's what it is. No, he the baby police. Dude. Girl, 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 that bed rest ain't no joke. When I tell you that bed, like, I know, like, I now, but I will say this: Whew. I was happy that I didn't have to um stay in the hospital all those months because those three weeks that I stayed in that hospital, man. Why y'all don't like being in the hospital? I mean, now I understand because of COVID, but before, why y'all don't like being in the hospital? I love being in the hospital. Pregnant? I mean, not not like be not something wrong with me to be in the hospital, but like after I gave birth, my best friend is like, she no, girl, I was in the hospital three weeks pregnant because of the di gestational diabetes. Girl, that oh, was the hold on. I can't hear you. You went low. My mom was calling in. Let me call you right back. You want me to call right, you right here on Facebook? Uh, call me on your on my phone. Y'all, we okay. about to go. Housewives at peace at. He said, y'all, I see y'all tomorrow as soon as I get this thing to turn off. All right, for real, though. Peace out, y'all. Thank y'all for listening. See y'all tomorrow. Oh, you in the hospital? 
praying for you, Naomi. I'm sorry. I'm seeing. I'm just seeing this comment. I'll be praying for you. Sorry for being. Um, I see that you're in the hospital with pneumonia and COVID right now. Oh my God. Sending you most most love to you. Most love to you. Love and peace and speedy recovery. I'm so sorry about that. Um, see, make sure I miss anything that was very, very important. Yeah, that was just very important. Sorry about that, um, Naomi. Love you, girl. See y'all later.